All right, now the world's tallest peak, the Mount Everest, seems to become a bit of a dead zone of late. Now the problem isn't just the bad weather or the avalanches or the other challenges that, that in fact go along with the climbing of Everest, but it's also about overcrowding, poor weather and also a lack of experience which in fact has led quite a few people losing their lives. Now a record number of people have been rushing to scale the Everest which has led to a bit of a human gridlock of sorts. At least about 11 climbers have lost their lives in just the 2019 climbing season, a number more than the entire death toll last year. Now, all these deaths have been blamed on overcrowding, with teams waiting for several hours in the dead zone, facing bitter cold and dangerously thin air. And also, as per reports, a total of about 381 permits to climb the mountain have been granted this year, even to inexperienced thrill seekers who, in fact, not used to such weather. Not go. <laughs> Seven thousand meters. All right, now, why is it such a huge challenge to actually climb the Mount Everest? And why is it that there's been such a huge number of deaths that have been reported off late? We are joined in our studio by IS and also an Indian mountaineer, Mr. Ravindra Kumar. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for joining us. Because this, this is a fascinating bit of, uh, you know, a lot of interest surrounds with the climbing of Everest. And you've scaled Everest twice. This was the second attempt, the second time that you, in fact, scaled the Everest this time around? Yeah, right. This was my second summit. So tell us, you know, in the last few days, there's been this, this reports in the media that have surfaced that one, way too many people are in fact trying to climb Everest. There is this commercialization of expedition of trying to climb the Everest. And if we can in fact get, get that picture on our screens of this traffic jam that has been witnessed at the summit of Mount Everest. Tell us, when you were there, what was the situation like? Uh, see, actually the problem of traffic jam is more on south side. Mm -hmm. okay, as you said rightly, 381 permits were issued. I climbed from north side there, only 172 permits were issued. Right. But then uh, we got only one day of attempt. So yes, uh, mm -hmm. I had to wait at second step. Like Hillary step on south side, there is on north-south second step. So when I submitted in the morning, early in the morning at 4.20 a.m. and I was returning back, so I had to wait around one hour. Uh, near the second summit. Okay, and also th the reason as to why it gets so challenging, they say the Mount Everest is 8,888 meters at its summit. Now, post the altitude of 8,000 meters, the air there is so thin that, you know, people can just stay there for a few minutes' time. So talk to us about the challenges of the amount of oxygen cylinders that you'd have to carry because this has to be lugged up by the climbers. But then again, if you run into a bit of a traffic jam there, then you're stuck counting minutes and breaths that you in fact end up taking. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it is said that a person living at sea level, mm -hmm. if he's brought to the peak of Everest, then he will be unconscious in one minute and die within two minutes. Unconscious in one minute if a person and is not used to the altitude of yes. 8,000 meters? If he is living at sea level and brought to the Everest immediately, mm -hmm. and he will be unconscious in one minute and die within two minutes. Why? Because above 8,000 meters, air is so thin and content of oxygen is so less that you can't survive for a long time and that is why it is called death zone. Okay. And now in death zone, normally climbers and Serpa also, we use bottled supplementary oxygen. Mm -hmm. Now, as you talked about the traffic jam and death of people, the depletion of oxygen, oxygen is exhausted because you are carrying limited number of bottles. Right. And if you are con uh, consuming at certain liter per minute, say 2.5 liter per minute, then your bottle will run for around seven hours, okay. one bottle. And normally climber carry three bottles for the final summit. So you have how much? Around 20, 21 hours in hand. Mm -hmm. Now if you are caught in traffic jam and waiting for two, three hours, this adds to it. And if your oxygen is exhausted, obviously you are nowhere. You have to die. That also gives a sense of that feeling of, in fact, standing on top of the world. You've done it twice. You, in fact, made three attempts. So you were successful in two attempts. W what does it feel like to be standing on top of the world? See, success always gives you happiness. 
So obviously you are much more happy on reaching the top of the world. But the reality is that the second moment, mm -hmm. what comes in your mind is just get out of this place. Because the place is so dangerous, the approach is so dangerous that as soon as you are on top, okay, you take photograph, you hoist your flag and then as soon as possible you want to uh, descend down to the safer place that is the normally considered the last uh, camp on the way to the peak. You know, do you not want to actually stand there at the summit and linger on and, and, and actually savor that, that experience that you're standing there at the top? How many minutes did you actually spend right at the top of the mountain? See, in 2013, I was there for around 40, 45 minutes. Okay. This year, I was there for around half an hour. Mm -hmm. 2013 what I observed because I climbed from north uh, south side so I wanted to uh, dis di differentiate where is India and where is Nepal mm -hmm. then uh, one thought comes to my mind that uh, like it is even you can see only peak and cloud there is no international boundary so thought came to my mind that these are all human made and the world would have been really peaceful if, if there would not have been you know international boundary and all this war and dispute in 19, I was there for 30, 35 minutes because I arrived early in the morning at 4.20 a.m. Right. And there was sudden cold wave. So temperature was so low that my camera, the battery got exhausted in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, also a lot of climbers started coming on top. So we had to vacate that place to allow other climbers because I think maximum around 10 people, no? Uh, mm -hmm. They can safely stand around the peak. Uh, so in 30, 35 minutes, I descended down and then by the evening, I was at advanced base camp. That is, right. you know, a very safe place of a base camp. And also tell us a bit about the training that you need to go through. You say that, you know, someone who is residing at the mean sea level will find it virtually impossible to yes. even last for a few minutes at the summit. So how do you train yourself to actually be able to breathe in such a less amount of oxygen and, and also what goes into planning? Is it pure willpower or is there something fundamentally that you need to change in your body? See, basically, yes, we are going for the toughest physical work as mm -hmm. it is considered climbing Mount Everest is one of the toughest physical work. So you need physical preparation, right. be it jogging, be it running, be it trekking, be it weightlifting. So physical um, uh, preparation is one part, I feel. Mental preparation has to be there and I think major part is your mental toughness. Right. Why? Because first is tough terrain, second is thin atmosphere, third is sight of dead body and news of death. Mm -hmm. When you are on the way to summit, you see years old dead bodies are lying on both sides of route. Right. So obviously you get psychological shock. You can be mentally weaker, you can return also. And uh, next is death of, uh, you know, news of death. When I entered base camp after that, you know, 11 people have died. So each death gives you some degree of discouragement that this can happen to you also. So How with nervous were you? Because this year it's been really bad. 11 people died in this climbing season. That must have played on the back of your minds while you were climbing up. Did you ever fear for your life? Honestly sharing, I never have negative visualization. I use one term positive visualization. Visualization means whenever you are thinking about your future scenario, what can happen to me, whether I'll successfully submit or no, then on the screen of your mind some scenery, some picture goes. So I always used to visualize that yes, I have done enough preparation, I have done hard work, and moreover, I'm going with a good national cause, water crisis to make people aware and appeal them not to waste water so that water crisis can be averted and drinking water can be saved for future generation. So I had clean mind, clean heart that I'm going with some good cause. I have done enough preparation. I do positive visualization. So I'm climbing slowly. I'm safely submitting and I'm coming back. Yes, Ravindra Kumar, what sticks out in, in this story of yours is you started off from very, very humble beginnings. You cracked the IIT examination. You cracked the IAS, which is one of the most difficult examinations there is, and then climbing the Mount Everest. What got you interested into mountaineering? It is such an involved adventure junkie kind of a sport. It is so difficult that very few people, in fact, take up to mountaineering on this scale. 
See, yes, uh, I'm born and brought up in Gangetic Plain, and then I worked for sea for around eight to nine years. I was totally new to mountain when I uh, went to my IS training academy. Mm -hmm. So I can say in short that this is gift of my this new service right. and plus my cadre. Why? Because when my cadre was allotted, my cadre was Sikkim. Mm -hmm. That is hilly state. So there I came to know that few years back there was earthquake and mountaineers were called for rescue operation. Absolutely. That gave me an idea that I'm a young energetic person. I must learn skill of climbing mountain. And when I made up my mind to learn this skill, then I thought let us try one pick. And which peak to choose because I had done IIT and IS, so I thought let us choose highest peak and try <laughs> our destiny. Right. So in 2012, I decided to climb Everest and 13, I was on top. Mm -hmm. Again in 15, I gave one attempt. That time I wanted to carry Swaks Bharat uh, Abhiyan banner to the top and appeal to people because it was uh, uh, basically a people's job, right. you know, uh, sanitation and using of toilet. So we had gone in 2015 when the Wonderful Prime Minister had flagged off our expedition because of Swakshwarat Abhiyan, but uh, mm -hmm. Nepal earthquake uh, <clears throat> sent us back. Uh, we even faced avalanche at the base camp and I saw in front of me many people dying. 18 people had died instantly right. due to avalanche. So we had to come back. Now that uh, dream was unfulfilled because I could not carry the Swakshwarat flag to the top. So I was looking for opportunity and when I was posted in drinking water and sanitation ministry, mm -hmm. then uh, which deals with Swaksh Bharat Avyan also and drinking water also. Right. There I thought now time is coming. So I decided I'll climb. But uh, this year water crisis was chosen because this is more relevant in contemporary you know, time. It, and uh, lastly, I'd also want to ask you, one of the reasons as to why you know, there have been so many deaths that have been reported is also because perhaps of the administration's lack of foresight. Almost about 341 permits were given and some of the climbers are said to be inexperienced. They've not trained themselves to actually, you know, take on the rigors of what it is like to be on Everest. Is, is there something that you'd like to tell the Nepalese administration that is giving out these permits? Perhaps, you know, the commercialization of this expedition to Everest. Should that be stopped or do you think more people should be encouraged to, in fact, take up this expedition to climb the Everest? See, you rightly said there are basically three factors. One is fair weather window. Mm -hmm. Now it depends on weather window because during that particular time only you can reach to the summit because wind speed is less. So one is this. Now within that window if more number of people is attempting then obviously route is one, traverse is there, narrow route so people have to wait. There are also limited space on the peak. Mm -hmm. So that is why if more number of people is attempting in one day there has to be Right. traffic jam. Now if one untrained member is there in the queue, then the slowest member decides the pace of Absolutely. the whole queue. So three reasons, one is weather window, second is number of climber and third is inexperienced climber. So yes, I feel that uh, government should check number of people attempting in one day, plus there has to be certain minimum level of training. Mm -hmm. Why? Because one week climber uh, decides the fate of all climber. That is true. Yeah. So if, see, uh, I don't say that, yes, number should be limited, number of people should be limited. If there is good weather window, then more number of people should attempt less in every day. If there are limited weather window, then yes, there has to be check on numbers. And lastly, you are an adventure junkie. Is there a word of advice that you'd like to give? You know, there would be a lot of viewers would be watching this and they would be wondering what it is like to, in fact, scale the Everest. Is there a word of advice that you'd like to give to these budding adventure enthusiasts who one day would like to scale the Everest? See, two things. One is uh, very famous mountaineer, Ed Vesters. He said that climbing is optional, but getting down is compulsory. Absolutely. So, yes, so this care has to be taken. Second, those who are enthusiasts, those who are pursuing mountaineering or any adventure field, mm -hmm. I'll just say them that nothing is impossible in this world. You have a will, you have a way, and I feel with positive visualization, you can climb any Everest of your life, so be right. it physical, be it mental, be it psychological. I think that, that's a very significant yeah. point that you've made. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Ravindra Kumar, for joining us and sharing us your insights and your experiences, what it was like to scale the Everest. I think that is what every individual who'd like to scale the Everest needs to keep in mind, ensure that you have adequate enough experience and that you know what you're taking on. And that, of course, Climbing is optional, but coming down, 
that is compulsory. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Ravindran. Thank Kumar. you very much for calling me.